Theater Basement, we interview Dapper Dre and Kazla Soronde with Museum of Contemporary Art Flagstaff. You know, I've been in Flagstaff for about two years and I've not heard of the Museum of Contemporary Art. Well, we are going to fix that problem tonight, right here on Live from the Theater Basement. Restaurants at the Weatherford Hotel are open for lunch and dinner. All socially distanced, of course. Wear your mask and enjoy a great meal in historic downtown Flagstaff at the Weatherford Hotel. Our correspondent today is Jamie Hisapis with the good folks from the Museum of Contemporary Art of Flagstaff here on Live from the Theater Basement. Thanks, Chris. Hey, welcome, Andres and uh, Caso. How are you guys doing tonight? Yeah, I'm pretty okay. good. <laughs> All right. Um, Dre, can you tell us a bit about mocap, how it started? Um, I believe it was, what, three years ago? Or am I, I would actually, it longer I'll, than that? I'll let Kazo uh, speak to that as executive director. He <laughs> uh, has a better timeline on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, Will Ambrose and I founded MoCAF, uh, the Museum of Contemporary Arts Flagstaff, in 2013 as a pop-up show in our uh, warehouse, like living space, basically. It was uh, just a, a place for us to show visual arts that was uh, more, a little bit more contemporary in Flagstaff back in 2013. Uh, we just felt like there was a space that was needed for that, so we just made our warehouse home into a gallery, and we had our first MoCAF show. Since 2013, we've been having pop-up shows um, featuring contemporary artists, working artists of the Flagstaff in Northern Arizona since then. It's basically been about two to three shows a year. Um, and we finally got our brick and mortar space about three years ago or two and a half years ago and uh, 513 nonprofit status um, about one year ago. Oh, nice. So, um... What are some of the uh, artists that you have there? Who are some of them? And, uh, you know, what kind of variety do you have there? Really, MoCAP's mission is to support all local, sorry, all local artists, um, no matter their medium. We have uh, four artists in the space now, photographer, two painters, um, and then uh, a sound designer, sort of a sound artist. Um, Mm -hmm. And those are the studio spaces that we have in the space currently. We host our events, go from poets to dance, to aerial art, to installation art. Um, but, you know, a big focus on visual arts, but we're moving more and more into the performative space. Ah, so I remember about three years ago, I guess it's when you got the space. Um, I actually went to that night. I, I actually met you that night, but I, you know, a lot of people were there that night, so... Um, yeah, lots of action going on. It was packed. It was wonderful. <laughs> so what are you guys doing now with COVID? Um, how are you dealing with that? Um, so I would say over the summer, at least, um, we were able to pivot just enough. We uh, teamed up with some other artists, a uh, Renda tribe who uh, coordinated some Navajo Hopi relief um, storage and distribution out of our main gallery space since we had to kind of shut that down for many events. But and we were also able to have pretty successful um, uh, bicycle ride art tours called Social Distance, uh, which were much more on the performance art side and musicality, um, dance, movement, that kind of thing um, over the summer. Um, so at least we were still able to interact with the artistic community that way. Um, and with this upcoming winter, we are uh, currently assessing what we're doing with our gallery space, but we've also been um, interacting still in the digital medium uh, with our month to month feature creative of the month, um, which is highlighting different artists, not only working um, again within the COVID time <clears throat> period, um, but also um, just folks who have been working on their skills, trying to highlight them still in this time of not being able to necessarily show uh, at the gallery. How can people access um, those videos? We have, uh, uh, our, go ahead, Dre. 
Um, primarily, we're working on Instagram and uh, Facebook right now. Okay. Uh, do do you have announcements that you put out, or or what? How do you how do you focus on that? You just post them up there, or are you asking them as well? Um, so far, right now just we're just posting, posting directly mostly to Instagram. That's our main um, medium um, that links to Facebook. But we're working on our um, website so that we can have that full catalog offered um, as people access that. Oh, huh, cool. Uh, Castle, can you tell me um, when is that website going to be coming up for folks? Or we'll have it up before Christmas. Yeah, before Christmas. Yeah, we'll. we'll We'll have it up before Christmas. Yeah, we're, we're on the works of it right now. We've been leaning heavily on um, Instagram and Facebook for the last year and actually since MoCAF started. Um, uh -huh. But it's time as our calendar starts to fill up and um, we really start to delineate, you know, events further in the future than just, you know, next month. Um, having a calendar and a space to go to for that calendar and to just like have, you know, a little bit more flexibility in updating, we're going to have our own website up before Christmas. So, Kazo, can you also tell me, do you, do you guys jury the artists coming in? How do how do artists find out about the um, the space in promoting their uh, modern art? Well, from the beginning, we've always wanted to focus on artists that didn't have an existing platform or at least a smaller platform. So, non-established artists um, focused on artists who were not showing in the downtown galleries or through the university, like artists that were working really hard, but maybe weren't as recognized for their work. Um, so we always keep that in mind, especially with our creative of the month. It's not so much that they're like lesser known artists, but maybe artists that aren't as well known in Flagstaff. Um, and just like really acknowledging um, the work ethic and the time and the process that it takes to be an artist, and especially in these times. But the, the process goes through the board we have a board of 14 people, a diverse board of Flagstaff, uh, of people from all over Flagstaff, Arizona. Um, we have a, you know, just a selection process through the board. Mm -hmm. And how do you, how do they find the artists? I mean, I mean, it's, it's just relying on the, the, the local networks as of now. I mean, we get a lot of uh, feedback from our Facebook page. Lots of artists will reach out to us. Um, friends mm -hmm. of artists will say, hey, please go check out this person. And we just make a list of these people and, and send it into our board and our board kind of decides which will be our creative of the month or if we have upcoming shows. Oh, okay. That's, that's nice. Um, so are there any other um, plans for the future as far as some big exhibits or events that you guys are planning? So coming up uh, shortly, we're teaming up with um, Jill Sands of the Heartbox Gallery right in the center of downtown. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're going to be doing a pop-up holiday um, artisan um, market um, on uh, Small Business Saturday, which is the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Again, not only uh, the 28th this year, as far as date is concerned. Um, mm -hmm. Again, dependent on weather, one, always crossing our fingers for that, uh, as well as always reading the um, current COVID reports. That's always going to be the trickier parts of um, that right now. Um, that's in the near future. Uh, in the a little bit further out, um, we're working on the culminating exhibit of the creative of the months. Um, as we've uh, released them, selected them month to month, we're having a con just a, all the featured artists come together and are going to have a uh, feature show at the gallery. Uh, we're still working mm -hmm. on what that is going to look like, if that is a limited in-person um, view, is that also coupled with a digital showcase? Um, there's a, a couple things that still need to kind of flesh out within, um, again, how we use our spaces right now. So hopefully that's uh, projected for March um, as far as that bigger show with the culmination of the creative of the months from this past year. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, I, I uh, didn't ask this question earlier, but can you guys tell us where you're located? You're um, yeah, um, our our main gallery um, 
since 2013, we've just been using unutilized warehouse spaces all over town. Uh, three years uh -huh. ago, we got a warehouse at 555 Blackbird Roost um, in, yeah, I guess, West Flagstaff, uh, just a little bit behind Plaza Viejo uh, and Natural Grocers there in, in Flagstaff. Um, it's a, you know, it's a pretty large warehouse, two garage doors, big open area. Um, the aerial artists had their dance studio in there for a while. Uh, historically, it's been a motorcycle repair shop, but we've been able to utilize it and have artist studios upstairs and a gallery space down below. Um, we've been there for two and a half years and we're really looking forward to getting back to utilizing it, even if it is, has to be in a, uh, you know, limited capacity. Oh, great. That sounds wonderful. Um, so is there anything else you'd like to, um, mention about, the, about MoCAF to the, to our listeners and viewers? Dre? Um, I would say, um, again, when you asked, you know, how people either are selected, interact with us, whatever that may be, um, part of it is that local network, but part of it is always um, folks who have any kind of idea who need a space to fulfill that kind of creative outlet, please reach out to us. We'll work with you however we possibly can. Um, I'd like to offer, you know, that sense that it's about a thousand square foot space that's, you know, can be filmed in, could be used for rehearsal space, could be used for one-off, um, again, creative projects of all sorts. And we are um, more than happy to add our talents if we at all uh, can add to the experience. Um, and also to just, you know, for everybody, not only who supports us, but to support all our local nonprofits at this time <laughs> as, as best you can, whether it is, you know, people tuning in not only for this show and your upcoming or theatricos as a organization's um, upcoming productions, but um, keeping in mind that we're all in this uh, kind of waiting and stasis period right now. Uh, looking to come out of it as strong as possible. So with with donations, with interactions, with creative input, um, we'll hopefully be in a place to uh, continue to bring good programming coming out of um, these restrictions with COVID. So just uh, right. continue to interact with your nonprofits as best you can. Okay. Well, we are out of time. Uh, thank you both for joining us for live from the theater basement. Have a great Get evening. Get your mask and come down to the Museum Club on Route 66 in Flagstaff. The Museum Club, with masks and social distancing and vigorous sanitation procedures, is now open. Have some fun, stay safe, and wear your mask. All at the Museum Club. Today's correspondent, Jamie Hisapis, with Dapper Dre and Kazo Sorunde. Hey, Kazo! Oh, Kazo disappeared! Oh, now he's back! <laughs> it's like magic! I know what the magic stems from. It's the magic of Jamie's amazing purple beard. Ah, beautiful on all counts. Wonderful to hear about the Museum of Contemporary Art of Flagstaff. Live from the theater basement, producers Jamie Hisapis and his beard and Linda Sutera, no beard. Engineer Matt Brewer, technician Jaden Roberts, associate producers Virginia Brown, John Propster, Michael Rulon, crew, Hayden Eckhaus, Casey Garcia, Ava Haynes, Malene LaBerge, Joe Maniglia, and Justin Moscow. Dramaturgy, Theatricos Artistic Committee, Play Curation, Northern Arizona Playwriting Showcase, Executive Producer, Chris Farrell. Live from the theater basement, streaming live on Sunday evenings at 7.30 p.m. and available wherever you get your podcasts is a production of Theatricos Theater Company in partnership with Northern Arizona Playwriting Showcase and Deuteran Films. Theatricos Theater Company, Flagstaff, Arizona, is the theater company of Northern Arizona and the Grand Canyon. Embracing the spirit of Broadway with shows like Matilda, The Legend of George and McBride, and coming your way this Christmas, the raunchy Christmas comedy, A Tuna Christmas. And it is coming your way. You can watch A Tuna Christmas live in person here in the theater. Uh, limited seating, lots of safety protocols, but you can watch it live or you can watch it streamed uh, in the convenience of your home. Live from the theater basement is a new show currently in previews during our world health crisis and in the process of being launched in a few months. Well, hopefully next month. If you, as a listener viewer, have input, we'd love to hear from you. 
email us at theater at theatricos.com. Live from the theater basement, streaming live on Sunday evenings at 7.30 p.m. and wherever you get your podcast, just search for it, you'll find it, is funded by the Flagstaff Arts Council, hashtag Creative Flagstaff, and the Arizona Community Foundation. Additional funding by the Arizona Commission on the Arts, Flagstaff 365, BBB revenue from the city of Flagstaff, and listener viewers like you. Thanks for joining us here on Live from the Theater Basement. This is Theatricus. Coming up next week on Live from the Theater Basement, we present the 10-minute play, What's Your Name? by Kim Richard, directed by Luis Fernandez. Two strangers interact on the street, uh, sussing each other out quickly, each 